Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we are looking at the NBA slate for Monday. We have eight games today to discuss. Let's go ahead and get started. As always, if you enjoy the videos, appreciate it for the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to join us, you can visit the website or check out Discord if you want to get in on sports betting. You get two weeks free if you sign up on Discord. Uh, yesterday, I hit on FanDuel 399.6 on the main slate. With Jokic as a center pick, he was a must pick. I didn't have him on DraftKings, so we lost there. Disappointing, but he, you know, he was a really expensive on DraftKings. A lot easier to get to on FanDuel, but you know, in hindsight, should have played him on both sides. But nevertheless, let's get into today's slate. Looking at the point guard picks, Luka Doncic is probable to play today. So even though he has a Q tag, he should be able to play. Going up against Utah, Utah's on a back to back. They rested Mike Conley yesterday, so he should be back today. It's still a not an easy matchup, but at least they're at home. The Mavericks have been playing well, even with the Przingis trade. Uh, so I don't mind getting to Luka, but there are a lot of spend-ups on the slate. You have James Harden against Chicago. I like the Sixers here. Harden and Embiid have looked seamless uh, playing next to each other, both having solid games. Here we saw Harden have one monster game with 80 fantasy points. Otherwise, he's been a bit underwhelming for his salary, but he's still been super efficient shooting-wise. He's not taking as many shots just because... You know, MB takes a lot. You have Max. He's been playing well. Tobias still you know, needs his 10 to 15 shots. So don't mind Harden, but I'd probably get up to Luka in that situation. Murray is questionable from the Spurs. That is going to be a big piece of news. If he's not able to play, it's going to open up the door because we know the Lakers defense is not good. And Murray just takes so much usage um, on the Spurs right now that if he misses, you're going to get a lot of value. Now, Barrett is up to 8,000. Russell looks okay, but you know there's probably some better picks going down here. Oladipo might make his return. He's missed a lot of time. He should be limited. Uh, there's still no Kyle Lowry dealing with some sort of situation. So hope everything's well with him. But even if Oladipo plays, he's, he's 66. He hasn't played basketball in like two plus years. Oh, I'm not looking at him in his first game back. There are a lot of value here because um, we didn't see, but Simons is out today from Portland. They did get Josh Hart back, but still not having Simons as well as their long list of guys that are already out. It's going to open up the door for a lot of value picks. We also have the Warriors resting their big stars here with no Curry, no Wiggins, no Klay Thompson going against Denver. So that's going to make Jordan Poole become one of the best plays on the slate. But the first guy I want to plug in is another value pick, and that's Brandon Williams from Portland. Um, he should be starting at point guard today in place of uh, Simons. He had a good game. He's had a couple of good games shooting-wise, been good for fantasy. Should be, be looking at over 30 minutes today, probably get like 32 to 34 if he's playing well. Uh, just without Simons, a guy that can fill it up from the floor, get you a couple of assists, maybe some defensive stats if he's just in there with some steals. But it's been just about a point per minute so far in his 16 minutes per game in his six games. That should be at least the same or it could even go up without Simons. At shooting guard, this is where I'll plug in at the top end. The same kind of talk about some of these guys here. Mitchell looks a little bit worse with Conley coming back. Uh, but you're definitely going to be wanting to play... Jordan Poole, he's going to be looking at taking a ton of shots. Whatever his um, overs are on prize picks, probably want to take the over on that before the line moves throughout the day. A lot of these Warriors are probably going to be you know, a little bit low to start, but you should see Poole play over 30 minutes, probably 32 to 35. They still have a lot of guys. You know, Kerr still likes to play a full bench, so it's not like they're thin on bodies, but there's still going to be a lot of usage just concentrated on Jordan Poole. Otto Porter should get a lot of shots off. You know, they'll get some more for like... Moody and Damian Lee, but Poole is going to be the big dog that you really want. Other picks at shooting guard besides going to Jordan Poole at 53, if you want to go cheaper than that, you have C.J. Ellaby at 45. He's going to be looking at good minutes here. Beasley at 43, especially if Beverly's out because uh, still Edwards is doubtful today. So Beasley got ejected last game, but if he's able to play, should be looking at good minutes today. And then you have Damian Lee at the bottom at 34. And even Moody, you could look to him from the Warriors. Uh, small forward, Butler is 85. Gets a great matchup against Houston on a back-to-back -back surprising win last night for them, breaking a 12-game skid against Memphis. So sometimes I just can't expect these things to happen. But don't mind getting to Butler. You have LeBron, 3,000 more if you wanted to go there. Josh Hart looks fine, but 74. He's already priced where he should be. Uh, so I'm not going to go crazy with that price. Do have a lot of value here with like McDaniels at 46. He started in place of Edwards and got more run without Beverly. So got up to 37 minutes, especially with Beasley being ejected. Uh, if there's no Beverly and still without Edwards, he looks like a good value pick. 
Uh, but I'll go with Otto Porter as a guy that another guy just like Jordan Poole is going to get a lot more minutes and a lot more shots off and more usage. He's a guy that can already get hot from distance, get you some rebounds, get you a couple of assists on the season. He's been pretty productive shooting wise from distance, almost 40%, 38% from three, averaging just about a point per minute. Looking at around like at least 25 plus minutes today, something I would expect. And then other guys would be LB as a value pick here at small forward. I'm going to go further down in the 3K range. You have a couple of guys like Cam Reddish been playing better for the Knicks, but probably like the Warriors guys a little bit more. And I like the Portland guys a little bit more. At power forward, your pay up is DeRozan at 97. Still not looking like... I'm going to go with DeRozan. Just, I never really play him when they're all healthy, except for Lonzo Ball, just because they still have Levine and Vooch demanding some usage. I look to Butler or Josh Hart as my payups at the position. You do have a lot of value here once again. They priced up like Watford, so he's not too appealing. They also priced up um, Eubanks at center. But one guy that you could look to on the Warriors side, again, is like Kaminga at 45. He should be looking at good minutes. Uh, he's been productive when he has gotten some extra minutes this year and should be looking at probably close to 30 minutes today if not a little bit more what i would expect him to be in the starting lineup so that's another good value at power forward wanted to go further down greg brown if he's able to play today looks decent but they still he was still coming off the bench i'd expect over at center you have Jokic at 12 6 coming off of a monster game against the warriors he has dominated them this year averaging 65 in two games coming off of a Overtime game where he played 43 minutes back to back. Hopefully, he still is fresh. I know he was dealing with like an illness a couple days ago, but should be good to go. So I, I definitely don't mind getting to um, Jokic. There's a ton of value here. So I can get up to Jokic at center. I can also get up to like Carl Anthony Towns. Leaves me still with over 40, like 4,300 dollars left for the last two spots. Uh, we still have a lot of value from Portland that we can look to. But Cat has also looked good against uh, Portland. They have no front court besides Eubanks to try to slow him down, and Eubanks has real no shot. Cat uh, put up 70 last time, last game against Portland, and no Edwards. Most likely today is doubtful. Potentially no Beverly. So another game where Cat and Russell are just going to dominate the usage. And Cat didn't even make a three pointer last game, and he still dominated. So it still could have had a bigger game. But paying up at centers, I think, makes sense. And then you've got a ton of value at the other spots with point guard with Brandon Williams, a lot of these Golden State guys. Other picks on Portland would be like uh, Keon Johnson as a min price guy. He's like $3,900. You have Ellaby at 45 And then if you wanted to take a shot as a payup for Josh Hart. But overall, that's it for DraftKings. Let's talk about FanDuel. All right, so FanDuel hasn't moved the Jokic's price. Things went down $100 from last night. So there's a, just two options at center. We'll get to them. Well, for me, that I'm looking at. But starting off at the point guard position, like the price tag on Luka Doncic, he's only 10-7. Super easy to get to, especially with no Curry. Murray is questionable, so he might miss. Not a ton of spend-ups. I uh, like Russell a lot at 76. And then you have a lot of value, like Kevin Porter, even though it's against Miami tough matchup. And we know he might like to get active in the Miami clubs. So he did have a good game yesterday. I don't know if I want to play him, but the price tag is still... Looks somewhat appealing. Value pick wise, it's going to be Jordan Poole. He's only 47. That is basically a lock play. Um, just way too cheap for Jordan Poole. And then I like Brandon Williams a lot as the min price guy who's going to pay, probably play over 30 minutes starting at point guard for, um, for the Blazers today. And he has been productive. At shooting guard, plug in Luka. He's just affordable. Like him a little bit more than Harden. You have Mitchell and Butler look like good plays in the 8K range, especially Butler at that price tag. You know, this is a game that he can rack up a ton of steals against Houston, even if he doesn't have a good game shooting-wise. Josh Hart at only 6K also looks appealing from Portland. Uh, it's basically looking at like if you want to pay up for Josh Hart or if you want to take a shot on the value picks here uh, with like Keon Johnson is also min-priced at $3,500. But Poole and Luke are my favorites. Uh, small forward. 8K Jimmy Butler looks like something you can get to. I also want to try to get up to LeBron, who's also very appealing. At only $10,200, his price tag has come way down on FanDuel over the last couple of games. We saw what he did last game. We still has it in him. Uh, Mid-range-wise, Josh Hart would be my favorite pick at 6K. 5K range, you know, if Barton plays, he looks fine at 52. 
4K range. Looking at some of these uh, Golden State guys like Kaminga at 46, uh, you also have Otto Porter. See what his price tag is. He should be pretty affordable. 41 for Otto Porter. Sign me up for that. Um, over at Power Forward, you have Sabonis at 9K. Looks pretty appealing. Randall at only 84 against Sacramento. Looks good. And then you're looking at some of the value with like Gordon at only $4,900. But I'm going to be looking at getting to another Golden State guy, and that will be Otto Porter Jr. Or actually, I do like Otto Porter Jr., but uh, Fando Eubanks, still only 4K, where he's 5K on DraftKings. So I'll look to get to Eubanks at least. And center-wise, we have just two options. for. Well, actually, I can throw an Embiid as three options. Embiid, Jokic, and Cat as my three guys that I'm looking at. They're all pretty affordable compared to where they've been at points this year. And, you know, Cat looks good without Edwards. More usage for him against a bad defense. Don't really see myself going cheaper for, like, a cheap guy. Uh, I guess you could play Eubanks at center, but you're just giving up a lot, hoping that, you know, one of these three doesn't have a monster game, which seems unlikely. So I don't think you can go wrong between, like, Jokic or Cat, but I'm going to lean to Jokic just because 10-8 is still a price tag you don't normally see on him. He's normally at least still, like, 11-4 on FanDuel. So we're still getting a great discount. And going up against Golden State should be a very good matchup for him. So that's it. Pay up for studs on Fandle, Jokic, Luka, LeBron. Fill it out with a lot of value from Portland and a lot of value from Golden State. That seems to be a pretty good route to go today. So that's it for the video. Stay tuned for updates and stuff like that. If you want to check out the Discord for sports betting, you can try it out for two weeks free. Link is in the description. It's also on Twitter. Check out the website if you want to join for lineups. And best of luck tonight.